Hi, this is Matt at Direct Impact Solutions, a formerly AppWorks, and we just merged. And this is going to be a basic video on how to create a relationship. We're going to start with a one-to-many relationship, which is the kind of a really basic one. And we're going to link a, a customer, a company table, to a person table. So we have, if we go to uh, Manage Database, uh, so the File menu, Manage Database. This screen has three tabs. And the first one is Tables, which lists all the data tables that you have and where you can see your company in person. The Fields, which give you the definition of the fields within each table. And then the Relationships, which shows you multiple table occurrences for each of your data tables. So in other words, we can actually duplicate these and have multiple copies of any given one, and it, it works just fine. I will um, not save my changes there. And let's talk about what we need to do to do this fairly basic thing, but it's not necessarily so simple the first time you've done it. And that is to link, I wanna show like a list of all the people who work at this company. Um, so if I flip through my records, I've got all these different ones. I have given these nice, simple IDs um, so in here, I've got um, like uh, ID 10025. And if I go over to my person table, you actually frequently won't have those. So that's one of the problems I'm for sure going to have right out of the gate is I need some sort of a way to link these. Now, you could, you could link it with something like putting the company name and using a name as the primary key field to link these two, to link this to this. We don't actually have the company name field in here either. But that's not a good way to do it because the company name will change and then the relationship will not work. So instead, what I want to do is this. I want to modify my person table and I'm going to add a field to it called ID of the company, right? So company ID or any way you want to name it. Um, I kind of like calling it ID company. In this case, we saw our company ID. It was a really nice numeric value. Um, there's another type of an ID called UUID, which we'll get to later. So now that I've made that here, I can add that field to my layout. And um, now I can see that they're all empty. So the company for the ID are all empty. And that's the way they would normally be when you make a new field. So if I wanted to then make a relationship between these two tables, this is the key right here, right? So now that I have that ID, I just draw a line from company ID to company ID, ID company right here. And that connects these two tables together. If I click on this equals, it brings up and shows me what the nature of that relationship is, which is, you know, your IDs of the two fields. There's some other checkboxes down here, which we cover in other videos, but a really useful one, especially in this case, is this one here, um, which allows you to create related records. Um, in the person table so that I can add a new person easily from the company screen. So you notice also there's some sort of left rightness here. So I um, usually I, I like to have the parent table, the, the topmost table on the left, and then down when you go towards the right, they become um, sort of children table or smaller um, aspects of what you're trying to do. Um, so Let's see how that would look. So I'll click OK to commit that. And then what I want to do is I want to add a portal. That's the next thing we're going to do. So if I go to layout mode, there's a tool here, um, which is this one, which is the portal tool. And I'll just draw a box. And then I can say, show me records from that person table, which is now related. And then I want to see like the first name and the last name and maybe the phone number, but not the job title yet. Um, one other thing I probably should, well, actually, I'll just put those on there for now. So I'll uh, do that. Now, what's going to happen here is we won't see anything linked, right? So I've, I've got 10025 as my company ID. And over here, if I wanted to associate one of these people with that company, for example, Jerry, if I just type in 10025 here, that immediately links Jerry's record to this company. If I, if I put some other person like this one. So basically I'm, I'm populating this field, which is a uh, referred to as a foreign key field in, in my person table. 
and that links the record to my company table. That's, uh, I think, well, when I first learned that it was actually not so obvious and not so simple, um, but that is the nature of how a relationship is connected um, from one table to another. So a very key thing to get. Let's take this a step further and talk about another type of one-to-many relationship that we have. And there's many uh, examples of, of one-to-many relationships. The next thing I want to take a look at is a invoice to an invoice line item. So this is a similar situation. And in this one, um, you can see that I already, already have an invoice number field and I have an ID invoice field over here. Let's take a look at what we have um, in those. So I'll go to the fields tab and an invoice, invoice number is a number field. That's going to be a friendly looking invoice number. An invoice line I have an ID of the invoice, which could also be that same friendly number. So um, let's take a look at that in form view. Invoice number is not on this layout. So it's possible this field doesn't have any values in it yet. And sometimes you'll get data like that where all of your invoices don't actually have numbers. You're importing them in from a spreadsheet, for example. So we can easily um, set those numbers. Um, and I'll use like a replace field contents and I'll use this function to replace them with serial numbers and start them at 101, for example. <clears throat> and in not a lot of time, it'll replace all those invoices so now they're all numbered starting with 101. Sometimes you're gonna have situations though where uh, a customer uh, will, will request a different invoice number or you have some other thing that's weird. And so this, this number field might be editable. And an, a friendly looking invoice number field, I would submit, is actually not a great primary key. And so FileMaker gives us this other feature um, called UUID. And so I'll make a new field here called ID. And there's a function called get UUID. And the UUID, I'll uh, uncheck that box, that's important. Um, the UUID looks like this. I don't have any of these populated yet on here, but we'll take a look at how they're very different from an invoice number and talk a little bit about why they're better. So invoice uh, UUIDs are very long. Um, and very random. And this number is such a large number that no one in any database anywhere in the world ever in time is going to have the same ID number because it's that large of a number. So it, it has it has a lot of value in just being unique to the world, basically. It's not only unique for all the tables in all your whole database, but it's unique for all databases for basically all time. Um, it doesn't look like it's that large, but it is that large because it's alphanumeric. So it's not just new numbers, it's also numbers and letters. So that obviously is not a number that you'd ever want a customer to see or use, but it actually can be really useful um, to link the database internally. And so if we take a look at our invoice line item table, um, let's see, and uh, let's actually go back to form view on this one as well. This has an invoice ID in here. This is actually not really gonna be useful. I'm gonna take over that same field for the ID of the invoice and change it to text. These are some things that are commonly uh, tasks you'll need to do to link and make these things work. Um, and then I need the contents of all of these invoice IDs so that I can link them. Let's just say that my 23,000 invoices match to 23, well, I've got more than that, um, line items. Um, so I can actually export my um, invoice IDs to disk. Um, so I'll, I'll create a file, uh, a FileMaker file called invoice IDs. And I'm just going to export one field. I'm going to export just the ID. That's that UUID field. And then this is cool. You're going to like this. On the invoice line item table, where I have this field for invoice ID, this is now a text field and it's populated, um, but I probably don't want these values in it right now. So I can just delete those and replace them with nothing. And I'm gonna import into this field 
all of the invoices to uh, the IDs to match up to those invoices I just looked at, which means now every invoice will have exactly one line item. So I'll go to import records and then I choose that file that I just made, um, which is this invoices file right here. And then this is an interesting dialog box, which we cover in other videos, but it's, um, this is the one where it says, oh, this is your source data, the ID field. And then this is your destination data. And I want to put it into the field called ID invoice. And then you can either add records, update records, or replace records in the current set. So we're going to use the replace function, which will just basically overwrite data in this empty field with data that I'm importing in that I just created a second ago in my invoice table, uh, which is pretty simple. Okay. So um, FileMaker gives me an error because um, I actually imported 23,000 records and there's actually 28,000 in this table and that's okay. That means some of the, some of the fields, uh, records towards the end won't have an ID. I can actually find those and then kind of do that same thing again. And then a few records are gonna have multiple uh, invoice, invoice line items per the invoice, which is great. So I'll just redo this exact same thing and do a replace. And because my found set was different, um, that will work. Okay, so now we're gonna repeat another step that I think is very important, which is the one to make that portal, because I wanna see what the line items are. So I go into layout mode, I use my portal tool, and you know, there's actually one other thing I need to do here. I have not created a relationship between these two. But what's great, and FileMaker is really lovely about this, is right at the spot where I would add my portal and I, and I want to show the invoice line items, there's a Manage Database choice. And if I choose that, it brings me right to the screen where I can then make my relationship between these two tables. And so I'm going to make not invoice number because that's the friendly one that sometimes can be empty or sometimes can change, but I want to add the invoice ID to the ID of the invoice in the line item table exactly the same as we did here from company to person. And then I'll also allow creation so I can create new line items on an existing invoice. Now what's great is once I click OK, that relationship shows up as a related table. I just choose it. And there's some other checkboxes that might be kind of nice to add, like for example, vertical scrolling. And uh, then I say, OK, well, what fields do I want to show? I want to see the item the quantity, the unit price, and the amount. So the amount is going to be the quantity times price. And then that will show me my line items. Um, these are kind of nice to give labels to, so I could like drag these out and put like, you know, labels for them. Item, quantity. There's some other nice features in FileMaker to align things. Uh, another tip while we're at it is if you just click on a text object and start typing, it will replace the text with whatever you're typing, which is a nice time saver. Um, and then amount. Okay. And some of those are that can be right aligned, so there's some other tips we can get to for that. Um, but for now, we're going to leave that off. So now, right, right away, we notice that the first uh, or some of the invoices on this list actually do link to line items. And that's because I use that same long, ugly UUID to link uh, invoices to line items. So that is two examples of using a uh, one-to-many relationship. The first one with company, where we did a standard a uh, nice friendly serial number and the second one um, using an invoice using a UUID which I think is a, a better standard for that a little harder to use but definitely better and then you can also see that some of them have multiple lines already these are the ones where I have uh, a second ID and then as I said to add another line item we can put test and then five at you know 250 um, and I don't actually have the math in here yet for that um, but that should actually calculate that out. And then, um, so that's basically how you can add a line item, and I can just keep adding lines here. 
right, to, to add more lines. Very, very simple. So this is one-to-many relationships. I will have upcoming videos for many-to-many -many relationships, one-to-one -one relationships, and other types of important um, examples and some and use cases of when you would do these things with FileMaker. Thanks for your time.